Howdy, Mark Serbu, gun designer, gun nut. Well, it's December 29th. I don't know, three days before the end. Really close to the end of the year. So this is probably my last video of the year. I I'm guessing, unless I, you know, something crazy happens and I've got to get footage of it and put it out, but probably not. Well, a little bit of controversy over the button master, obviously, making a big stink in Canada. <laughs> that was low hanging fruit, wasn't it? Being in the gun business, of course, I tend to think conspiracy theory first, and I was wrong. So what's the conspiracy theory? Well, it started off with this list, and I was thinking there must have been something underhanded going on for the Canadian government to know about a one-off prototype I made 23 years ago, but there's a really simple explanation for it. It's called the Interpol Firearms Reference Table, and well over 100 countries have access to it, and they have their own versions of it. And here's a Canadian version with their page showing the Buttmaster. Okay, so how does Interpol know about the Buttmaster? Well, like I've said several times, the Buttmaster is an AOW. It's an any other weapon registered under the National Firearms Act. And once you register that, now that I guarantee you gets shared with Interpol. So that's simple. So while the ownership of NFA firearms is privileged tax information, the guns themselves, eh, not so much. As much as we'd like to think that our governments are full of corrupt, inept a-holes, that just wasn't the case here. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's plenty of that to go around in every government, I think, but that's just not what was at play here. But I'll tell you what, I sure caught a fair amount of crap for not pushing that conspiracy theory hard enough. I had people who left comments on the video, sent me emails, called the shop, all mad that I didn't bring all this up on Tucker. And man, well, on the Tucker show, you know, you got literally like a minute and a half to talk and you just can't cover everything. So that's a main problem there. But like has been brought up over and over in comments and other people's videos, the Buttmaster is already illegal in Canada due to its barrel length. It's too short. So, yeah, there's a little bit of ineptitude going there, but it could just be as far as just a single staffer and That's what I thought. not having proper oversight, whatever. So, uh, I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Do you think there's more going on here? Is it just simple Occam's razor, some dumbass just you know blindly copied a list and didn't care? Let me know. All right, now on to the odd physics. Well, physics, gun dynamics, whatever you want to call it. This is actually from the original Buttmaster video. And one thing I didn't talk about was how there's actually a delay in setting off the round. And that's unusual. Take it from a guy who watches high-speed video of guns going off like most people watch Netflix. Okay, now I've slowed the original high-speed video down 90%. So watch. Bounce. Look at that. It, now it goes off. But it bounced for like a year. Okay, I'm exaggerating. But trust me, in general, that just doesn't happen. The bolt drops, the round goes off instantly. But who cares? What I'm really interested in is the bolt bounce, or striker bounce, whatever you want to call it. I had guessed that it was something related to the Benelli inertia system, and also thought it was something to do with the primer expansion, well, in this case, rim expansion. And I was partially right. Turns out it had a lot more to do with the principle demonstrated by this device, known as Newton's Cradle. Yeah, you'd think that a guy who's been designing gas-operated firearms for over 20 years would think of this first, but... You know, I'm getting old and forgetful. The point is that the first ball transmits its energy to the other balls in a similar way that a bullet transmits its recoil impulse to the rest of the gun. So to see how it looks on high-speed video, I figured I'd drop the striker on an empty chamber, then on a nail gun blank, and then on live rounds. First up, nothing in the chamber. And look at that, nothing happened. And here I try it again with an even higher frame rate, and holding the butt master even more firmly against the backstop. Same result. Now here's the first attempt with a nail gun blank, and as you can see, we get a little bit of rebound. A blank doesn't build pressure anywhere near what a live round does, but there's still some pressure there, enough to definitely move the case back a little bit and maybe undimple the primer a bit. That's what we're seeing. Okay, now here's a live round, and of course you see a huge difference right off the bat. Interesting to note between the first and second shots here, you can see that the gun was held more firmly in the second shot and the striker didn't bounce as far in the second shot. And you see the same thing with the third shot here. Now I'm wondering if I make this giant clamp system to hold this sucker down so it can't move at all, is that striker movement gonna be reduced even further? I'm, I'm guessing, yeah. I think the reason it moves as much as it does when it's loosely held is that thing gets away from the barrier a little bit and then the recoil makes it kick back against the barrier and that kinda makes it like the Benelli inertia system again. So I, th I think we have three, three things at play here. Anyway, nothing hugely scientific as far as the conclusions, but you know, this whole video was born out of me seeing something on high speed video that I didn't know happened. And and that's what you do when you're a when you're a gun designer or gun nut. You look at stuff that's surprising, stuff you didn't know. It's like, hey, what the hell's going on? And investigate it a little bit and uh, yeah, you never know what's gonna come out of it. 
And in my case, I get to learn stuff and I get to share it with you people. What do you need, you people? Thanks for watching. I appreciate you as always. Happy New Year. I mean, end of the year is two days away now, so uh, I'll see you next year. Speaking of low-hanging fruit, huh? Take care. Have a good one. Appreciate you guys watching as always. All right, look, I know I just used that Tropic Thunder clip, but maybe you didn't see that video. Did you? Let me know in the comments.